that he did make some great plays. We would, we would like to win every one of those battles. You know, the 50-50 balls, the two straight on uh, Sean uh, down the sideline late in the game. And he made a – Sean gets his, got his hands on the first one and, and uh, uh, the kid caught it with one hand. And then obviously the second one, I thought there was a push off there, but that's neither here nor there. We got to play ball. And he caught it with one hand again. So I thought those two catches were really, really uh, a credit to him. Uh, and, and then I think that uh, we have to play better on some of the, uh, on some of the other inward breaking routes uh, where he caught passes. And, and I, I believe we will. And Kerry, about that, you know, you think of a player like Sean, it, it takes a certain self-confidence to even try to play that position with what's required. Do you expect those guys to, to rally this week? <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? I, I would imagine they're, they're probably uh, up to the challenge. But, but what's the mentality of a player like that when you go through some tough moments? Well, if you're, if you're going to play corner, and particularly if you're going to play corner at Ohio State, you, you're gonna, you, you have to have a short memory. You have to uh, understand that by the nature of the defense, there's going to be pressure on you every single down, and you've got to uh, step up and, and make plays. I have no doubt about their confidence or their ability to do that job. Uh, I, but I also understand having been here for a long time and in, in the nature of how we're going to play football, that those, those things are going to, you know, they're going to throw those balls and, and they're going to catch a few sometimes. And I just got done. I, I talked to Sean uh, and seven both about, I just got done uh, spending two years in the league where they caught balls on us. You know, that, that happens. They have good players, and, and good players make good plays. Ready? And, I, and just so we can get through as many people as possible, if you just limit it to one question, uh, we'll go to Stephen Means from Cleveland.com. Stephen. Hey, Kerry, just back on Sean. I know he's your best defense, defensive back in that room, but this is still his first year playing outside corner at the college football level. He spent most of his time inside just through two games and – you know, he's had some good moments and some bad moments because you just maybe evaluate how he's played. Yeah, I, I wouldn't characterize any of the moments as bad moments. I think that that's part of playing corner at Ohio State and, and having uh, situationally plays that uh, you're going to have to compete on and contest uh, balls. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what we would say relative to the, the first game we would be referring to, but uh, I don't I, – I have no worries about Sean Wade. All righty, we'll go next to Dave Biddle from 247 Sports. Dave. Hi, Kerry. Hi, Dave. What does Tyreek Johnson do well? That's a young man that you recruited. So what, is, what does he do well? What are you happy about when you look at Tyreek? And what does Tyreek need to do better uh, to get more playing time, especially now with Cam Brown being out? Yeah, conversations about what players need to do better are best had with the players, and that's where I'll have those conversations. But Tyreek is uh, what he does well is he plays uh, very hard every day in practice. He studies the opponent. He prepares himself uh, to play, and, and he will do that this week and, and obviously uh, be prepared uh, to go out there and play and hold up the standard of the unit. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we'll go to Tim May from Letterman Road. Tim, you're up. Hi, Kerry. I hope you can take a little bit of a compliment here, but I, I thought you called uh, or y'all called uh, Saturday night's game with a professional, almost an NFL flair from the standpoint of uh, mixing it up and stuff. And just as you look back on that game, what did you like about the way the mix you guys had from a defensive standpoint, from blitzes to coverages and other things? Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you, I thought that uh, the guys on the staff did a really nice job of formulating – uh, plans uh, to stop the run primarily, obviously, that, that, that was very important that we gave, we had some different schemes in the run game. And then I thought, uh, I thought they did a really nice job of putting together a package uh, for the third downs. Uh, you know, I thought, I thought on third down, we were, we were really good combination of, of pressure and coverage uh, and being able to do some things to kind of keep them from being comfortable in the pocket. And uh, the, the staff worked, uh, worked really hard on putting those things together. It's a great tribute to, to them and what they did uh, getting ready for the game. That's a good offense, and I thought they knowing, did a really nice job. Was that a product more of knowing your personnel better from the previous week, or was that just a product of being together one more week? Yeah, I think it's a combination of things, Tim. I think one is we knew our opponent better because we really didn't have a good feel for what Nebraska was going to do going into that opener. You know, you have an idea, but you don't know. 
and uh, I felt like we had a much better uh, idea of, of seeing this year's players and this year's offense from Penn State, which gave us a chance to plan a little bit more. And, and you know, uh, obviously having these, these guys on the staff having played Penn State and they know what those games are like and what, what their strengths are of their personnel, um, having a, you know, a lot of good information from them about how to put the plan together to try to take away the things that they did best. Thanks, man. We'll go next to Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Joey. Kerry, uh, where do you feel the absence of Cam Brown being sidelined will kind of hurt you guys or affect you guys the most? Well, I think anytime you lose good players, uh, it's going to affect you and other players have to step up. You know, the, the, the whole next man up thing is no joke. And especially this year, I think we've been training our guys from June for the, the, the possibility of having to be able to play uh, uh, in a game suddenly. And I think that that's really important, you know, to try to prepare them for that. We had that same situation uh, Saturday before the game where you all of a sudden you're going to be thrust in a role and, and the team is going to be depending on you. And so you're going to have to be able to step up and fill in. And so in, in, the, in the secondary room right now, that's what everybody – it's all hands on deck. Everybody has to understand that their role uh, may change slightly for this week's game. It may change for the next five weeks games. And, and you have to, and you better be prepared to play more than one position in the back end because there, there's going to be moving parts as, as we go through uh, a season like this. All right, we'll go next to Austin Ward, Leonard Monroe. Austin. Hey, Gary. Hi, Austin. Um, for for an amateur like me, when you're talking about guys filling in and playing multiple positions, yep. it, it seems at times like Josh Proctor is doing some things that at least look corner-like. Is he someone that is going to be key to, you know, filling in here with Cam out? Yeah, what I would say is he's key, period. But you're not wrong in that he has played uh, in, in a variety of spots on the defense because he has versatility. And, and the reality is, Austin, they, they all need to have that. It's not, a, it's not a year where you can say, well, the, we've got these three or four guys that play corner and that's all they do, and these three or four guys that play the post safety and these guys that play the cover safety, and that's just all we're going to do. It's just not, that's not feasible this year. So uh, Proc has done a great job of being able to learn and fill in in, in uh, a different capacities uh, week to week. And a lot of other guys uh, are, are preparing themselves to do that as well. Thanks, Gary. Sure. All righty, we'll go next to Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Bill. Yes, Gary. Yes, Hi, Bill. You obviously uh, coach with Greg Schiano. Um, could you kind of describe your relationship and, and just what it's going to be like to go against him? Does that, the familiarity with him and what he, how he thinks, does that help? Or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I thought, I, well, I really like Greg, first of all. I think he's a, outstanding football coach. I think he's a better man. He's a good husband. He's a good father. I really like Greg uh, and, and it learned a lot of football from Greg uh, when he was here at Ohio State. Got to compete against Greg way back in the old Big East and, and learned to, you know, dislike him when he was coaching the other team. And uh, he's a guy that uh, his, his, what, what the stamp that you see uh, already on that program is those kids are playing hard now. They, they, they're, they're playing hard. They're playing with discipline. And uh, he's done a remarkable job, uh, I think, in, in probably any, any new coach, new staff in a situation like we've had this offseason is, is even harder. And I just think he's done a great job. As far as familiarity is concerned, I think that that works both ways. And I think there's a lot of familiarity uh, staff to staff uh, going into the game plan. And I think you, you have to take that into account, uh, obviously, and, and, and knowing how people – like to attack different things offensively and defensively, that, that would be information that would be helpful. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. All right, we'll go next to Dan Holt from 11 Warriors. Dan. Hey, Kerry, you guys don't have a ton of veterans at cornerback with Cam Brown out. What are you seeing from the freshmen like Ryan Watts, Cam Martinez, Leif and Ransom so far? Right, I'm seeing growth. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it, that's a process. Uh, uh, as you guys know, and, and the disappointing thing, of course, is not having had spring ball or really training camp with those guys makes it a little bit more challenging for them. So their learning curve has, it gets accelerated another notch beyond just being a freshman uh, at Ohio State. 
Uh, but but I, I love those kids. Uh, they're working hard. Uh, they're preparing themselves to play. Uh, as I've explained to all of them, uh, they are going to be needed uh, during the course of this season. And so, uh, you know, they're, they're preparing a, as if they're going to play uh, every day because they are. And so we're getting them ready. Thanks, Jerry. Mm -hmm. All right, next up is Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Nathan. Kerry, you just mentioned a couple minutes ago and other coaches have as well about how you prepared for this, um, the idea of depth and guys being ready quickly. I assume that's kind of the case year in and year out, though. What was different about this year's preparation, either in the way that you approached, um, I guess, reps in practice, or is it just something in the mindset? How, how was this year's preparation different? I, I, to be honest with you, Nathan, I think it's dramatically different. I think because you just – you can't guarantee yourself that your players are all going to be there on Saturday evening. And, and because you can't, then you have to – you better have contingency plans, right? You better have a thought process. If, if you get three false positives in the same unit going into kickoff, what are you going to do? You can't just say, hey, we're going to call timeout. We don't have any players. So that, that I do think is, is much different than it's been uh, any, in any year uh, that I've ever been a coach. And so it's not just about coaching guys for depth, but now it's also about coaching guys for depth and versatility, which I think is important. All right, we got time for two more. Uh, we will start with uh, Bill Landis and then finish with Tony Gerdman. So, Bill, you're up. Hey, Kerry, um, it, it looks like you guys are playing maybe a, a little more quarters or maybe some two men, I think I saw last week. M more split safety stuff than there was last year. Just w what does that give you, and, and what were you looking maybe to build upon with what was already in place when you arrived? Yeah, I, I think that uh, the structure of the defense is, is remarkably similar uh, to, to last year's defense. I do think you're accurate in, in uh, seeing some of the changes – uh, in the back end, but I think that those are uh, changes that are designed to um, try to supplement uh, the base package and maybe target taking away some things that the, the offense does really well uh, in, in, in certain formats. All right, we'll finish up with Tony Gerdeman from Buckeye Scoop. Tony. Harry, you're talking about the, the need for vers versatility. What has Lathan Ransom done to, to get into that mix a little bit, which is impressive considering he's such a late arrival? Right, yeah. You know, I really like him. I, I like all of them. I mean, Lathan is a run and hit guy, and run and hit guys always end up playing football. And uh, he's, he's a sharp kid. Uh, he's very uh, committed to learning, and, and, uh, and a, as they all are. And so he just found himself as having been a guy who's been – uh, getting some of that work in in certain spots where all of a sudden we needed somebody. And so you're, it, I'm, I'm telling you, Tony, it is really next man up. And that's the way you have to prepare. And so it, it could have been Lathan, it could have been Ryan, it could have been any freshman. All of a sudden that happened to be the role where they were getting uh, some work this week in practice. Boom, you got to go. And, uh, and, and I, thought he did a, I thought he did a really nice job for the few plays that he was in there. Uh, and I would expect that uh, he'll continue to have his role increase as the season goes on. 